two degrees is no big deal. Outside, temperature can go up and down by that much in a single hour, right? So why are scientists so worked up about such a little change? It's true, a degree or two does not sound like a lot of global warming. So when we hear that the Paris Agreement wants to limit warming below two degrees Celsius, or that the latest report from the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, or the IPCC, says that the impacts will be very serious even past one and a half degrees, it just doesn't compute for most of us. In our lives, over the course of a single day, temperature goes up and down all the time, by a lot more than one or two degrees. So what's the big deal? Here's the difference. We aren't talking about the temperature of a certain place at a certain time. We are talking about the long-term average temperature of the entire planet, which over human timescales is as stable as that of the human body. Think about your body. It's pretty warm to begin with, 37 degrees Celsius or 98 Fahrenheit. Then imagine it goes up a degree Celsius or nearly two degrees Fahrenheit, as the temperature of the Earth already has. That's worrisome. It's not normal. You start to feel it, you're overheated, achy, tired. You go to the doctor. The doctor says, yes, you are running a fever. And it's not just some illness you picked up somewhere. No, your doctor says, and they add, they've consulted with nearly every other doctor in the world and they agree too. This fever is the result of your lifestyle choices. This is exactly what's happening with the earth. We are running a fever. And as we talk about in the global weirding episode on natural cycles, none of the usual suspects are responsible this time. It's not the sun, it's not volcanoes, and it's not the Earth's orbit. It's our lifestyle choices, specifically burning coal and gas and oil, that's about three quarters of the problem, and the other quarter is deforestation and agriculture. To change the temperature of the planet by a full degree, it takes a lot of energy. And that's why we scientists don't only use degrees, we also use joules. A joule is a measure of energy. It takes one joule to lift an apple about three feet in the air. You can thank Isaac Newton for that. So how many extra joules worth of energy has the planet accumulated thanks to our lifestyle choices and all the fossil fuels that we've burned? More than 250 sextillion or zeta joules. That is 21 extra zeros. And that number is climbing at a rate of four Hiroshima bombs worth of energy per second. Let that sink in. So you can see why this fever is worrying and why even past one and a half degrees Celsius or 2.7 degrees Fahrenheit, the impacts are serious. Nearly every way that climate change affects us scales to some degree with global temperature. Average precipitation in some regions doesn't, and we don't know enough yet about severe weather events like tornadoes and hail to say for sure how they're changing. But just about everything else, heat waves, heavy precipitation events, the area burned by wildfire, coastal flooding, even economic costs, all of those tick up as the mercury rises. So the more carbon we produce, the greater the temperature change that we'll see, and the greater the damages. Just like the impacts of a prolonged high fever on the human body. Let's look at economic costs first. If the world warms by two degrees, the average GDP of many poor countries would drop by five to 10%. If the world warmed by four degrees, it would be more like 10 to 25%, with a global average around 20%. In the US, many regions, particularly the Southeast and the South Central region, could see drops of up to 20% in their GDP as well. How about human lives? Burning fossil fuels is already responsible for air pollution that kills over 4 million people around the world every year, 200,000 of those in the United States alone. But warmer temperatures make that pollution worse. It's estimated that if the world warms by two degrees rather than one and a half, that would mean an additional 150 million deaths just due to air pollution alone. The difference between a warming of one or two or three degrees or more is laid out in detail in a few key resources. 
first, there's a report by the National Academy of Sciences called Climate Stabilization Targets. In this report, which I co-authored along with other scientists, we found that per degree of warming, we expect a 3 to 10% increase in the amount of rain falling in the heaviest events, a 5 to 15% reduction in the yields of major crops, and a 200 to 400% increase in the area burned by wildfire across the western U.S. And as we talk about in our Global Weirding episode on climate impacts in the Southwest, the area burned by wildfires today has already almost doubled since the 1980s due to a change in climate. Then there's the 2018 IPCC report that looks at the difference between a one and a half and a two degree world. It highlights not only the risks that increase with temperature, but also which ones we'd see a significant difference in even between one and a half and two degrees. These include average and extreme temperatures, sea level rise, extreme rainfall, and drought risk for some regions. It's estimated that biodiversity loss could double under an additional half degree of warming, and there would be increased risk of permafrost thaw in the Arctic, as well as ocean acidification around the world. In terms of human impacts, if warming can be limited to one and a half instead of two degrees, this could mean 50% fewer people exposed to water stress and lower risks to health, food security, and economic growth. That's a huge difference we're talking about for just half a degree Celsius or 0.9 degrees Fahrenheit of global warming. So how do we connect the dots between global change and what it means right here in the places where we live? That's actually what I do. I do that by combining real-world data with climate model outputs and using that to calculate how our lives will be affected as the world warms by one or two degrees or more. We calculate the impacts on things that matter to us, like corn yields in Iowa under a one versus a two or three degree warming scenario. How often a record-breaking hot summer like the one we saw in Texas in 2011 would recur as the world warms by one or two degrees or how the water supply for a city or a water district or a state would be threatened as the world warms by two or four degrees. Why do I do this? Because in order to understand why another degree of warming is such a big deal, we can't rely on our own experience of temperature. None of us has ever experienced such a big change in global average temperature, and especially not one that's happening so fast. As far back as we can go in the history of human civilization on this planet, we have never lived through such a large and a rapid change. It truly is unprecedented. And our food, our water, our energy, our infrastructure, and our economic systems are not built or prepared to cope with it. So next time someone scoffs, two degrees, that's nothing. Tell them, no, it is a lot. It is more than enough to tell us that our planet is running a fever. It's real, it's us, and it's not just serious. It's time to fix it before it's too late. Thanks for watching Global Weirding. This episode was brought to you in part by Citizens Climate Lobby. If you have any questions about climate versus weather, let us know during one of our Facebook Live Q&As. And please be sure to check out globalweirdingseries.com for more episodes. See you next time.